you know, it's not so bad up here on the wall. It's really just just a case of keeping warm when you think about it. There'll probably be some more about warm mm -hmm. for you. As long as you're um, supplied, not too bad at all. Mm. Someone coming in. I wasn't expecting anyone until Wednesday. Never mind, never mind. Mm. Oh, bloody hell. Wildlings? Wildlings again. Oh, oh, yeah, worse. Never mind. They never make it to the kitchen. I'll deal with them at the gate. Whew. Visual gags, we've got them. Mm. Mm, yes, we do. So, as if it's not um, abundantly, abundantly clear, we've got something slightly uh, topical for yeah. you today. Today's dram takes us north of the wall of Johnny Walker's White Walker, mm. first released in October last year, as a tie-in to HBO's unbelievably popular adaptation of George R. R. Martin's A Song of Ice and Fire. Yes, a bandwagon so leviathan that um, no gimmick can escape its wake, yes. um, and indeed neither can ours. So here we go, um, a gimmick video for a gimmick whiskey. It is Johnny Walker's White Walker blended Scotch whiskey. Um, not the only, as I discovered only yesterday, um, not the only uh, Game of Thrones themed whiskey out there, but probably the most um, typical, certainly the most available. Yeah, and the gimmick here, of course, is that it should be drunk frozen. Yeah, to um, to the extent that they have a um, chillingly predictable message <laughs> that only appears on the bottle once you freeze it. Huh. Um, it will infer that, oh, in, right. that indeed winter is here. Um, of course, it's not for most of you watching. It is for us in the it southern is hemisphere. Very nearly but, getting um, wintry for us. Yeah, it's indeed. Summer timely and apt. Summer approaches for all mm. our North American viewers. But never mind, never mind. And um, yes, so drink cold is what they're suggesting. Mm. Um, never, never one to sigh away from abject sacrilege. We're going to try it warm first yeah. of all. Room temperature. Uh, because Frost. we actually like to know what's going on in that whiskey over here, and I want to know if there's trying to cover up, cover mm. up any sort of maybe cost-saving measures that might be otherwise, um, otherwise covered up by uh, serving a whiskey frozen mm. off the bat. So, so, um, in terms of the, the the taxonomy here, it is a blended. Scotch whiskey, um, nothing, nothing funny going on there. It's a pretty typical Johnny Walker, and it's pretty typical as to what goes in yeah, it as some well. Cardu, some uh, Kleinleash, and a, probably a fair whack pretty of fair grain. Whack of grain. Too. Yeah, but um, a curious forty-one point seven percent yeah, ABV. That curious to the point of I mm. don't get it. There's, um, I mean, you, you couldn't typify a more obviously chill filtered whiskey. Mm. We've just taken it out of the freezer and um, well not this but as you'll see when we tip it out ice cold nothing will cloud this whiskey. This yep. has been chill filtered within an inch of its life. <laughs> so um, it isn't for that. It seems like a very very manufactured yeah. strength to the point where I almost wonder if it signifies something. Mm. So if someone knows the secret behind the code. I must there, confess yeah. that I am not in any measure a fan of Game of Thrones or the novels it's based on. I'm so I have no useful knowledge to contribute here whatsoever. Mm. So no, no, I'm in very much the um, the same boat in mm. terms of knowing it nothing. So yeah, if you do know what that signifies, let us know in the comments. Mm. Would be uh, fascinated to know. But um, just a wee last bit on the taxonomy there. Um, Cardu, Klein Leash, and whatever grains are coming hurtling our way. That's very typical of another Johnny Walker whiskey, and that's Gold Label which, funnily enough, also goes by a um, sort of a frozen moniker. More than once at trade shows I have been suggested that Johnny Walker Gold Reserve um, should be served frozen. <laughs> so there you go, there you go. That's maybe the, um, some of the DNA in this whiskey was there all along. But let's have a wee look. Mm. Mm. This is, as we say, the room temperature version. We want to get the full uh, array of aromas and flavours. Such as they are. Oh, that's actually not a bad nose. No, I quite like yeah. it. I get something 
fairly immediate here, which is a bit of a surprise. There is, I mean, there was always going to be grain in here, but yeah. there's old grain in here, which is a bit interesting. Old grain is not something I mm. was expecting. I was expecting grain just because I'm very cynical when it comes mm. to, um, you know, gimmick whiskies like this one that have been made for the for the mass market. Yeah. Um, throwing grain at it would seem like a very easy way to get your um, more bottles for your money. But what are your aromatic signifiers for old grain as well as any other grain? Old grain whiskey, it is. It's a very confected kind of a nose you get. It's like um, Russian fudge is something like Russian fudge, coconut rough, bounty bar if you were down right. over here, white jelly bean if you're over in the Europe, UK. Um, it's very, very vanilla centric and it's very, very sort of soft and sugary. Sugary in a way that malt whiskey is not. Malt whiskey is sort of very, very fruity um, and its sweetness comes across as more of a honeyed element, whereas this is more of do you get a sort of a fruity custard with this? Yeah, the hints of custard. There is some, uh, mm, the egg and oh, uh, cream sort of custard flavor. Yeah. Macintosh is toffee. Definitely custard um, cream, toffee, coconut kind ice, of thing. and a bit of that Russian fudge you were describing. And I think that blends really well in with Klein Leisch's quite naturally sort of sugary, custardy, smooth, um, oily quality. So I've not a lot of honey and beet sweets of Klein Leach personally, mm. but it's been a while since I tried one. So yeah, and, that's, um, yeah. yeah not, not pleasing, pleasing nose, yeah. very, very Moorish. You know, it's definitely a whiskey that's mm. um, appetizing, appetizing yeah. to check out. Mm. And it more or less follows through on the palate. Yeah, that's gentle, but not benign. Mm. A little bit of warmth there. Mm. It's very, very mellow. Yeah. It is very, very sweet. Good sweetness. It is, it is very syrupy. It is not... There's almost no sherry components in here whatsoever. Um, there is no peat whatsoever. Um, but the grain is, if anything, even more evident. But not in a bad way. It's quite a pleasing grainy because it's older mm. grain. Note there. Red berries, cream, custard, and some meringue. Definitely custard and things that might appear yeah. in custard. A bit of um, you know stewed stone fruit, a little bit of banana even, oh. if one is ever a fan yeah. of banana custard. Vanilla ice cream. Absolutely. I've never got that just on its own in a whiskey before. Mm. But there, is, there is spice, but it's only one spice, and that is nutmeg. Mm. Um, if you ever, in <sighs> fact our American viewers will have more currency with this, Eggnog. There's a mm. lot of eggnog going on in this whiskey. There's a bit of cinnamon there. I'm getting like a little puff whiff of a uh, cinnamon quill. Mm. I can't quite grasp that one, mm. but I don't do a lot of trade in the cinnamon world. Right. Um, so it may be that I'm not particularly tuned tuned mm. to it. It's only a whiff, but it's, mm. it's in there with a nutmeg. Um, so the, the experience really, ultimately, is it's a pretty, I guess, disposable whiskey mm. in that you drink it and immediately move on. It hasn't got a long palate um, yeah. or a complex palate, but there's nothing in there that is particularly... Nothing in there is bad. Mm -hmm. I, 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 it's a pretty... I talk about unhateable whiskies, um, and this is coming into that category. I think there's something in here for everybody, yeah. just because it's presenting flavours which are almost universally mm. desired. I guess. I guess it makes sense. After all, it's meant to be enjoyable as a whiskey, but also primarily to appeal to mm. fans of probably the most successful TV show of all time, which Quite is a lot possibly. of people, Quite a lot possibly. of whom won't be uh, regular whiskey no, drinkers no, or whiskey drinkers at all. So it's, I think it's very carefully constructed. Yeah. It's a uh, possibly the ultimate beginner's whiskey, mm. because almost anyone could approach this and go, hmm, you know, something to like here, isn't there? There's no yeah. challenge. It's a challenge-free whiskey. But, but, we should say, this is all, as I said up front, sacrilege because we're doing it backed to front here because that's the sort of whiskey men that we are. So we will put this to the side and we'll have it as intended. Mm. The bottle's been in the freezer for a good long while uh -huh. and we have a fair amount of ice in our also chilled glasses. It's um, this down still as cold, as, still cold as the um, rote messaging will mm. imply. As it be, packaging is, you know, uh, you really can't. 
judge too much. Oh, no, 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 I can't. Um, they've certainly done, um, you know, put in some effort here, like you know, Johnny Walker in his uh, scaled armour riding coat. And uh, it's a, it is a nice bottle, yeah, you can yeah. say that. And um, bottles that change colour with temperature really brings back that, as a 90s kid, that really does resonate with me um, on, a, on a weird, weirdly deep level. Your hyper colour t-shirt owner back in the day? Um, I was not, but yeah. I did enjoy various um, gimmicky products such as um, cans and other things which changed colour uh, as, as did temperature. Really it was the golden age of consumer science in the 90s, but never mind, never mind. Hmm. Uh, lost, lost to time now. So. Um, this is, as we can see, because my ice cube, I don't know about yours, has actually fastened itself to the glass, so we can assume we're dealing with a yeah. zero or below environment here. This is the intended oh, method of delivery. Glass is misting up pleasantly yeah, already. For the whiskey, so we'll see how this changes the experience. That aroma has gone very wooden. A lot of the floral or sweet elements have disappeared. It shows just how jaded I am that I didn't even smell it. <laughs> it's yeah, it's surprising um, the difference. The moment I launch ice into my whiskey, I almost immediately discount the aroma, but no, you're right, we should be doing it properly. Wow, that really dramatically mm. alters it's it. It's stripped away so many of the layers which were there and just left a few core, um, well, characters. Same kind of, it kind of knocks it all the way down to, this could be a glass full of vanilla ice cream at this mm. point. It's not... Dissimilar at all, yeah. French it has ice demolished cream. so many of the flavors as well as the aromas. It's really pared mm. it back. I guess probably partly to the of the obvious ice and gimmick, but also just to uh, sort of neutralize it a bit, level the playing field again for benefit of those who are completely new to whiskey, who wouldn't drink it, would touch it otherwise, except from the mixer. And they've been quite forefront with um, recommended cocktails and mixers for this as well on the. Website oh, yeah, I didn't even look up mixes for this. Yeah, we've got no, a nice. few suggestions there. Goodness. All involve chilling the whiskey as far as possible first, then plunging in. Oh, yeah, I would have thought it would be a bit gentle for cocktails, really, but mm. I suppose it depends what you're making, really. I don't, yeah. can't say I make a great many cocktails mm. with Scotch whiskey. That's normally um, bourbon country yeah. for me, but oh well. That's, so, as a whiskey, from like a, a reviewer's or connoisseur's or snobber's perspective, that has really nullified most of what was going on here, chilling it down like that. But at the same time, it's good to taste it this way and see what the, uh, the blenders were going for in the first case, first place. And just the amount of um, the amount to, to which that has changed, the extent of the modification that's been wrought by freezing it effectively, that's yeah, quite a stark contrast. Yeah, stark. And it's yeah, actually quite a quite a fun experiment. Yeah. It's um it is interesting. It's it was an easy whiskey before, but now it's an effortless whiskey. You yeah. could give this whiskey to children and they'll drink it. There is just really zero. Don't, I mean, I mean, 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 mean we don't, 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 don't ever do anything that Tim says, obviously. Um, um, <laughs> we should put that on the front of the video. The um, it's it's gone from a challenge-free whiskey to just an effortless whiskey. Um, this this is a whiskey for this is the the wheelchair access whiskey. Um, I've actually found it probably more engaging and easier drinking at its original temperature because it's um, that that chilling has taken away a lot of those uh, nuances and complexities, but taken away a lot of the sweetness as well. It's become much more woody, I find. Mm -hmm. Obviously, a vanilla ice cream is still there, but so much of the um, sweet custard and fruit has been uh, burned off, um, leaving behind something which is actually a little more dry. Yeah, it's it's remarkably interesting exactly what serious, serious cooling does, what it, what it takes away, what it leaves yeah. behind. Um, vanilla obviously is the flavour that cannot be um, cannot be dulled because this is about as cold as you can get whiskey without industrial machinery mm -hmm. and um, the vanilla is still going great guns there, it's still the dominant flavour characteristic so that's obviously something that is not affected particularly by temperature but the more nuanced things, I think particularly the fruit, what of it there was in the initial whiskey um, that's what's sort of maybe gone by the wayside a little bit with the sort of super, super chilling. Mm. Um, but I don't dislike it, and I think that's probably what they were going for. Yeah. I don't think, you'd have to be a pretty much of a whiskey hard-ass to say, 
I don't want to drink this. Mm. You can say I don't agree with this. This is this is a, a completely it's delicious a abomination consumer. of a whiskey. You're yeah. wasting perfectly good single malt. You could you could have all sorts of philosophical mm. qualms with it, but I would challenge anybody to have a sip of this, chilled or otherwise, and say, yuck, because it's yeah, it, it is difficult difficult to dislike. Um, it's just a very very Moorish, um, yeah. and I, I think they have manifestly succeeded in the um, the. Uh, hypothesis mm. that they were going out for, which is let's make a whiskey, let's make a Super Bowl whiskey. Yeah. Let's make whiskey that is unto the big bowl of chips on the table. Um, whiskey for everyone, all, mm. all colours. Um, and they, I think, have pretty manifestly succeeded in that. Um, and despite being themed around the villains, demonic entities of the frozen wastes of the north, it is extremely friendly and approachable and just eminently drinkable whiskey. Yes, indeed. Um, Scoring this, and we will score it, is going to be a bit tricky because yeah. um, do we score it on its room temperature variant? Do we score it on the... Or do we just go with what we prefer? I'm going to take it as an all-round thing. Take into account how it manifests when you have it at room temperature as a whiskey drinker would normally do. Or chilled all out to heck as the um, blenders suggest. You know, as Johnny Walker direct quite sternly <laughs> really on, the, on the label. So I'm going to take it as both. Take both into account, and for me, it rounds out at a 73. Mm. It is, as we say, a pleasant, approachable blend. It is very much a blend. There's a lot of like, fairly young whiskey in here, um, young malt, and some a, a hearty amount of grain of varying ages. It's got some pleasant flavours though. It's a, the vanilla ice cream certainly is a standout component here. It's not hugely complex, engaging, cerebral, whatever you like, but it is easy to drink and it's enjoyable to drink. Now yeah. that's what it's obviously aiming to do and it does it far better actually than I expected. I think that's that's sort of the, the crux of this whiskey. It is a, um, they have achieved what they set out yeah. to do and one can only, one can only respect that when you're selling whiskey to the mass market. Yeah. Um, it's a very different place to selling it to sort of whiskey geeks like ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, who have much more, you know, comic book guy and The Simpsons um, stipulations about what we what we want to be seeing and what we demand in our whiskey. Um, this one, I think, what really bumps it up a little bit for me, what bumps it up to a seventy nine, is the fact that they threw in some old grain and they didn't have to. Hmm. They could have just stuck with young grain and kind of let it roll, and no one would have really known. But whiskey geek that I am, I know what old grain tastes like, and I can pick it up in that, and I appreciate that they have found a vehicle for this older grain whiskey. And I think it does, it, it picks it up from sort of being just a gimmick to being actually quite an interesting hmm. Johnny Walker. A lot of thought out, um, particularly crafted yeah, gimmick. Yeah, yeah. One for, I mean, there aren't a great many aficionados of grain whiskey out there, hmm. but for the microscopic fraction of them that there are, um, this would be absolutely risky I would turn them towards because mm. um, I've tried I've tried samples of sort of Hague um, single grain or even if it's a single grain I forget but it's 100% grain um, and yeah I've had a few a couple of grain whiskies yeah on there. and they're, they're very they're very rare but they do offer their own sort of a thing and mm. I think this is a almost a de facto grain whiskey because of how strong the influence of it is. And I think it's a good de facto grain whiskey. So yeah, I, I think it has its own little niche, um, even in amongst all the um, marketing and rhetoric that otherwise um, comes along with it. But anyway, anyway, that's probably quite enough about the, um, what they even called? The White, White Walker. Walker from Johnny Walker. Mm. I have heard tell that Diageo has made a um, Game of Thrones version of each and every single one of their classic malts, mm. so um, that's a nightmare. <laughs> but we probably won't um, step into that. Uh, step into that quite. Well, let's see if it comes that way. You never know. Yeah. You never know. I mean, there are a few tie-in of novelty or pop culture whiskies out there, and there are some others coming out this year, which I may check out in the fullness of time mm. as they make their way to our shores. If you're, if you're going to bring up the Star Trek whiskey again, then possibly we're going to have words. <laughs> All right. All right. Mm. That's enough of that. Um, Game of Thrones quote. Game of Thrones quote. It isn't winter is coming. That would just seem so bloody obvious, wouldn't it? 
Um, oh, this is YouTube, so we can't end on traditional Game of Thrones bloodbath or orgy, so I guess we just... No, I actually, yeah. it's just, got nothing. just nothing. Um, Have a wonderful day and yes. enjoy a dram, why in not? The, in the game of whiskey, you drink or you lose, because if you hadn't <laughs> drunk whiskey, you've presumably failed at the exercise, or you're one of those filthy collectors raising the price. <laughs> We're coming for you. Anyway, mm -hmm. this has been the Single Malt Review. We're going to take all these hot clothes off now because it's um, getting pretty Not all of them, but at least be. Well, you know, yes. goodness me, Dave, you're promising them too much. Mm -hmm. But um, we don't want to become one of those channels. No. They get demonetized, don't we? <laughs> anyway, anyway, cheers. Um, keep safe. Yes. And sludge.